Bokatov covering. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Tensions still very much at a heightened alert there in Israel this morning. Jerusalem with many, many riots still taking place and protests. And of course, three Palestinians and three Israelis are dead as a result of the latest clashes uh, stemming from last week's shooting of two Israeli police officers there on the Temple Mount from smuggled weapons inside the Temple Mount. Uh, before we go to RT and what RT is reporting about Syria and Damascus, let's jump over and look at just some of the footage here that is coming out of uh, Jerusalem this morning. Uh, this is ABC News showing this video footage right here on Twitter this morning. Uh, the crowd's being dispersed. Some of this, I believe, is from uh, yesterday and maybe even the day before the dispersal of the protests that are going on there inside of Jerusalem. Uh, and of course, the protest is uh, from the Muslim community, the Arabic community of the metal detectors being placed uh, for the entrance of those that are visiting the uh, the Temple Mount or the Al-Aqsa Mosque, uh, the Muslim community being restricted with, uh, without having to go through metal detectors. It's very disturbing to see that uh, the Arab community has responded this way, uh, especially in light of the fact that it's equality what the Israeli government is doing. The Jewish and Christian uh, worshipers that also like to come to the Temple Mount that of course are not even permitted to even pray on the Temple Mount, uh, the, one of Judaism's most sacred and holy sites in all the world, uh, but yet they must go through metal detectors, not only metal detectors, but x-ray machines, uh, etc. And we don't have the case of violence as we have seen that just happened last week on the Arabic side where they just go through a checkpoint. There's never been, there's not been metal detectors placed there. There is no x-ray machines. And now with this elaborate scheme to, to smuggle weapons into the Al-Aqsa Mosque, and then those weapons brought out and used to kill in cold blood Israeli uh, police officers, could have been easily bystanders. It could have been children, even Muslim children that could have been killed as a result of the, uh, this attack or even crossfire of Israelis trying to defend themselves. So it, this is something that needs to be done, the, the metal detectors, at least just for the protection of not only the tourists that come there, but also for the Muslim worshipers as well. So it shouldn't be looked at as something that this is the Israeli authority overstepping their bounds. This is safety and safety should be first and foremost in this. Uh, so it's very troubling, and uh, and we get this like uh, this particular newscast from AJ uh, News Media here, I believe, which is a Palestinian organization, and of course they're showing uh, all the protests that are happening inside of Jerusalem, etc., and how that they are defiant, and they're not going to leave until the metal detectors are removed. This lets us know that this is an organized. Uh, event. This is something, no doubt, that has been planned. This is not just a spontaneous reaction to metal detectors. Uh, the Israeli government has placed metal detectors around the old city. They've removed them. Uh, they've done this several times because of the stabbing attacks, and it's been dealt with by the Palestinian community uh, there in Jerusalem. But now we have this new wave of uh, open defiance over the metal detectors uh, for the access to, to the uh, Temple Mount, uh, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, uh, the Dome of the Rock, etc. And it's very troubling to see that we're seeing this. It lets me know, we, we know the late Joel Bainerman stated that uh, the 1993-94 uh, Oslo Accords was actually for dividing of the land, dividing uh, Jerusalem into two parts, East going to the Palestinians, West going to the to the Israelis, and the old city going under an international uh, uh, domain. And actually, the Vatican would be the one given the right to govern the old city. This would include the Wailing Wall. Uh, this would include the Kotel, the Temple Mount, etc. And it would be guarded by a United Nations force. I have believed for some time that they have been looking for a, a, a way to be able to force this on. Uh, not so much the Palestinians, they would be more than willing to go for it, I believe, but to force this on the Israeli community as well, to take away the Wailing Wall and the Kotel from them without being controlled by an international community. They finally have got exactly what they need. 
the right type of scenario, the right type of protest to be able to bring this about. And yet the Israeli government will have no idea or the Israeli people, I should say, the government may be aware of some of this, at least some of the insiders may be aware of what's going on, uh, that this is an actual, probably a plot in order to bring about uh, the demise of the, uh, the Jewish people and their own access to, to at least to the Wailing Wall without going through the United Nations. So I'm waiting to see more about this. We see the Vatican not too long ago calling upon going back to the Oslo Accord agreements here or the 1993 agreements, not the Oslo Accord, but the 1993 agreement with Israel that they had signed the covenant with Israel. And, uh, and clearly, uh, they're, they're definitely getting ready for that. Uh, moving on in other news this morning, RT uh, is reporting that uh, illegitimate coalition must pay for destroying Syria, Damascus, to the UN. This is what... Uh, uh, the Syrian president sent and with his own envoys there to the United Nations that the U.S. coalition must stop bombing inside of their country. I believe he's capitalizing on President Trump's uh, freeze on arming the Free Syrian Army uh, and not wanting to give them weapons any longer. He's capitalizing on that momentum. Now he's saying they must uh, not only... Uh, stop doing that, but also stop the bombing and destroying the infrastructure of Syria and has demanded that the U.S. coalition and their allies actually repay for the building of Syria because of uh, the destruction of the country through the civil war and through the funding of all the terrorism that has destroyed lives and the country itself. Very strong uh, move by the Syrian president to do so. Uh, as always in all these wars, though, it always seems that the world does come together in rebuilding, such as in the case of Iraq. But how do you rebuild all the lives that have been taken? It's just not possible. It is a crime against humanity. And in the case of Syria, it is a major crime against the three monotheistic religions, Christian, Judaism, and Muslims that have lived together and all the different factions in between that, the Yazdi, Yazdi community, uh, etc., that have all lived in peace together there for 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 years now. Uh, as Israel prides itself as being a democracy in the Middle East, Syria, I would have to say, definitely plays a second uh, second place in that before this war got started in Syria. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. More to come later this evening. Do pray for us. We are, we are having to pack and move our things into storage as we get ready to come to the United States. So it's been very busy, very hectic. Uh, and check out also, we were uh, the other day with uh, John B. Wells on his program, Caravan to Midnight. I think that aired last night. You might be able to go in there and, and catch, up, catch up on that program there. Also airing on Flashpoint uh, with Bonnie Harvey on Hebrew Nation Radio. That airs today. Uh, don't You don't want to miss that very insightful information that we shared about the latest situation in Israel. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.